Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. I'm excited for this one. So in uh, keeping up with, you know, updating you guys on what I'm up to, I've now had some absolute fun with my PLC stuff. So I've got like a new sort of base module thingy here. I guess it's just like my own little like PLC test bench. If you remember, I used to have over here, this thing and a bit of wood uh, with a 1200 power supply and then, you know, some capacitor sensors and whatnot. And I've got that uh, box over there, but you know, moving this around is a bit annoying. Not that I move this around much, but you know, I just wanted to make something cool. So I now have this absolute beauty, which is just insane. So I've got a little touchscreen seven inch HMI here, which is running an Electron app, which if you watched my last video, you've seen me, I've done this and it is absolutely incredible. So from here, I can turn on and off all of my inputs and outputs. They're all on, I can turn them off. There you go. So yeah, I'll run through quickly what I've been up to um, and what my plans are for this. So generally I've got like a lot of stuff around PLCs that I want to learn. You know, so for example, this bloody thing, the Arduino Opta, I still ain't programmed it. And I realized I had a lot of prejudice because I read stuff online about how you couldn't program it in, you know, you had to program it in C++ or whatever. And I was like, what the hell? I bought a PLC that I've got to program in C++. So I never, I've never actually programmed it. So I want to program that. I've got a Raspberry Pi here. I want to see what a Raspberry Pi is capable of doing. I've seen that people have them in industry, um, in control panels, like actually uh, doing work. So, you know, to me, the Raspberry and OS is horrible. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of Linux. Sorry, don't shoot me. Um, but yeah, so I I want to I want to I want to play with that more as it relates to PLCs. I've got a PC here which is running uh, this my Electron app, but I just want to do more around SQL data logging. I want to do more around MQTT. So as I want to learn stuff, I think I've got a Modbus module somewhere here that I paid a hundred quid for from RS Next Day Delivery that I was super motivated to use and then never used. Where's the bloody thing? I don't know somewhere in my box. Uh, yeah, so I've got stuff that I want to learn, and so. This thing suits me nicely. So I'll give you a quick tour around it. Um, so it's not fully safe in that I do have 230 volts coming in here into a single pole neutral circuit breaker feeding this power supply. So those are ex exposed. So I kind of would like to stick that in a little plastic junction box or something. I've got my 24 volt power distribution here. There. And then I've got some circuit breakers so I can turn on and off my PLCs and whatnot um, and something else spare. So that's this side of things. Oh, actually, I've also got a, I believe it's a 12 volt. No, it's a DC-DC converter. I think 24 volt down to 5 volts with a USB-C output, which is powering my Raspberry Pi. So that's this side. Power distribution side, not really interested in it. I just kind of want enough terminals, 24 volt terminals that I can play with. I've got a 5 amp power supply. May end up having to upgrade that, who knows? We'll see. Then on the other side, top to bottom, I guess, um, we've got my HMI 7 inch. It's an Elecro uh, HMI panel. I've 3D printed just a cheap little crappy base for it for now. I don't have it DIN rail mounted, so I've just got it stuck on with tie wraps. I've got my push button station, my lovely push button station. So if I hit the T stop, all my outputs go dead. Lovely. I've got a switch, which currently is wired into my 1200 plc but i'm thinking of maybe like dual wiring it into the arduino or maybe wiring my inputs into the 1200 and then having the 1200 talk to the talk to the arduino and drive my outputs some weird stuff like that that's kind of what i'm thinking uh yeah so i've got arduino opto plc raspberry pi this is a four i did i, I saw the five and i thought oh i should buy that it's 100 quid but um yeah i don't you know i've got four fours four raspberry Pi fours that i don't use so i should probably start using those uh opta plc arduino this is the wi-fi one 1200 plc dc 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 and then i've got a cheaper like 20 quidish network switch from from amazon uh, or china and then an absolutely beautiful pc i mean this thing's a beast it's got an ssd it's got 8 gig ram i can easily upgrade it to 16 gig or 32 if i wanted to um yeah brilliant pc my plan with this is to just like stick a sql express server on it and just you know really have some fun with windows um yeah and then some a few relays oh, sorry a few terminals one relay and that's it so i've got 
you know, enough here that I feel like I should be able to have some bloody fun with this thing and really just improve. Oh, sorry. I missed that thing in the middle that you can see there, the light stack. So that thing turned on, turned on and off there. Green, yellow, red. And there is also a buzzer on there, but I've disconnected the buzzer because it's a pain in the backside. I kept, I kept accidentally turning it on. Cool. Yeah. So that's everything. Um, it wasn't, it didn't cost much. Oh, obviously the frame is uh, 3D printed. So you can see that there. This is actually glow in the dark. Um, I should show it. It's pretty cool, actually. No, I've got, I got like four lights on. I can't be asked. It's glow in the dark, this 3D print. Um, I will probably upgrade this because I, I, I feel like I could do with having more space. So I'll probably go for a bigger frame, a bigger 3D printed frame. 3D printed frame. Uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, I guess I'll show you quickly my lovely HMI, which this thing is just an absolute beast. Let's have a look at this, yeah. So it's seen that my e-stop's been pressed, so I can acknowledge that. It knows that forcing is active. It's like bouncing around because I've forced on some input, so I can come up here and clear forcing. Now that's turned off, and then now the PLC program that's on that CPU is just gonna, every 10 seconds, it just cycles through its outputs. So then it's gone to, oh, it went from green to red, okay. This just has to do with, so if I hit the stop now, it'll turn off and then concentrate back on. I think the buzzer would be going now, but I disconnected that buzzer. So I can turn them all off, on and off individually and override the program using forcing, which I've done all here. Um, and then my analog inputs as well. You can see, I don't actually have anything connected on my analog input, but what I've done is, you can see the raw value there. That value will flicker just as it picks up noise. So if I rub my finger over it, it should get higher. Um, or if I show you, let's get, if I get two screwdrivers, shove them in here. Did that increase? Not really. Anyways, you get my point. There's nothing actually connected to it. So what I've done is I've just given it an, a scalar value of a thousand. So it's amplifying that value massive. So if I go back to my home page, look at that, that's cool, isn't it? Then it is just these this chart here is charting the analog input and output. And it's uh, just all noisy and crazy. Which is pretty cool. So one thing I've done, which you you have done since my last video, so I'm gonna continue developing this thing, is I'm now logging the status of every single input and output. So if I hit the e-stop, it tells me that input ADA has come off, input ADA has come back on. If I switch, change over some other inputs, I'm just switching my switch back and forth now, logging all of that. If I press the button, so every IO point that's happening on that 1200 is being logged. And if I hit this export CSV, it then asks me to save it, save it, and then so this is a this is obviously running Windows 11. How do I get to? There. Uh, says, I don't have any CSV thing to look at. It. Oh no, I can. Notepad. Hey, there we go. And then look at that. I mean, it's just incredible. Electron, you know, programming JavaScript. That took me five, ten minutes to write this code to have it uh, data log everything and then export to a CSV. And I mean, yeah, the bloody thing works beautifully. So I'm going to continue. So you can see there's still logging my e-stops as well. So if I hit e-stop, logs each one. Yeah, cool. All right, guys, I think that's it for me. Um, I'm just going to keep you in the loop of what I'm up to. I'm enjoying myself. I'm having fun. And uh, yeah, I've got loads of stuff that I want to learn. It's uh, someone, at work, someone at work asked me, you know, why do you do this stuff at home? And it's like, don't you just get interested? Like, I think about, I've got Modbus in my head and I'm like, okay, I really want to have a good grasp of Modbus so that, you know, I know that if I went into a factory now and they were like, we've got, you know, 350 Modbus devices here, I'd be like, shit, how on earth do I deal with talking to all of those? But obviously I understand Modbus. So I kind of just want, give, let me just get some Modbus temperature sensors going and just really get a co good concrete uh, thing for it. So yeah, those are the, that's, hopefully you should see this in some more videos and you might see it a bit upgraded and changed a bit, but I'm pretty excited for this. I will try, I was going to say I'll try to leave some links in the description, but I'm probably not. But if you want anything, just ask. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.